Good evening. So, I think we are going back in time today. Way back in time. Some Clancy splinter cell. Get the green there, go in front of the green screen. So we're going to be watching the splinter cell stepping out of the shadows. Is this possibly a remake from the original games on the original Xbox? I mean, this for me is going back, way back down to, what, 2002 maybe? If you like, if you like the video... Uh, give it a like, subscribe, what have you. That'd be greatly appreciated. But, for now, let's get on. Here we go. Classic Splinter Cell. And with the series return on the horizon, it's the perfect time to look back at the game that started it all. I'm going to ask. The graphics back then compared to now is massively different. Yeah, 2002. Best known as the company that made Rayman, a bright and colorful platform. Splinter Cell was not that. It was a dark and serious stealth action game that favored slow, methodical movements over frantic action. And no one was quite sure how fans would react. Maybe it's better if I didn't see anything. To find out more about the development of that first game and the lasting effects it had, we spoke to some of the folks that helped launch the original Splinter Cell, and some that are helping to bring it back. So much nostalgia right now. Look at the movement, just the graphics, everything. Sam Fisher. It was so good back in the day. First time we really understood that we had a hit in our hands is, I guess, when we were talking to Microsoft. Like we had that feeling, that gut feeling, but it wasn't validated by anything. We never had a hit before at Ubisoft, like not a big one like that. When Microsoft came to us and looked at it, they knew also something was up and they were considering it for their E3 showcase at the time for showing off the Xbox. And it was super scary for us because we were like, how are people gonna react? We don't know, it's very dark, is it gonna come through nicely on the screen? Is it gonna show off its colors? The feedback we received uh, from E3 was so incredible. So it just gave us, uh, gave us a huge push to uh, to get things done and get this game to the level of the expectations. Probably for E3 and for our competitors and for um, you know for for players at large, it probably came out of nowhere. There was this whole who who is Ubisoft? It was a transformation of what Ubisoft could do. And how they were regarded. That was very special because at that time, uh, taking lights out, make it dark. Um, we were producing games, but we were not in a, in a triple A mind mindset at that time. And this game became somehow a, a great inspiration from the teams. And from that moment, uh, when Splinter Cell did release with uh, a very cool feedback and, and nice reviews and, and nice popularity as well, this this has been an incredible trigger. For the whole studio to reach for this level of achievement for other games but what exactly was it that drew in audiences at that e3 what did splinter cell do that set it apart from the crowd the answer as it turns out was pretty black and white light shadow it's instantly relatable and instantly something that you know how to play with people got the rain they have never seen such amazing visuals at first. That whole shadow and light was beautiful, and it was giving a dimension that they had never played with. And it had to do with the, the Xbox and the ability of the Xbox. Like shadows back then, then though, were incredible the little feet. Really were. Um, and it was really the ambition of the team uh, early on to, to push the, the, the visual fidelity of the game as, as far as we could. The way art and level design had to work together um, to deal with, you know, how dynamic lights would affect the gameplay as well as the visuals was probably one of the biggest challenges of development. It was one of those times where a game came out and just really had a brilliant presentation that was so critical for the actual design itself. So you can only imagine how exciting that would have been for the team. The first time we saw the, you know, the fish tanks that you could, you know, you could shoot. Crazy, backlight. Really Crazy. To the stream and down Look at that. The bullet hole and then it would stop. And, you know, you could keep shooting it. In Physics, the, like, yo. Little tweaks like that, little little surprises that, that, you know, people just found the time and the energy to put in to add the polish and the, and the care to the game. Uh, that was great. I remember thinking to myself, you know, I was 
super blown away by the, the tech advances that were part of that game, the stencil shadows and the, the moving cloth and, you know, uh, the thermal goggles and all of the stuff. And I just remember thinking to myself, you know, um, how that was even possible at the time. Visually, it was amazing. You know, the, the light effects were remarkable ahead of anything else that was being done at the time. But it was even more than that. The use and exploitation of light and shadow set Splinter Cell apart from its competitors, but it would take more than that to deliver on the development team's promise. A promise they felt so strongly about, they put it right on the box art. Stealth action redefined was born out of the fact that this was, it was, this was a challenge to the god of tactical espionage action, which was uh, Metal Gear Solid. It, it was Metal the Gear Solid? That Splinter Cell set out for itself it was okay if we're going to take espionage if we're going to take stealth action how are we going to position that in a way that fits the tom clancy brand values as well we had rainbow six where tom was working on his recon those were obvious from clancy games but split itself came from montreal and montreal wasn't working on tom clancy at the time and when we looked at it we looked at Fantasy. We looked at um, the realism and the techno thriller aspect of it. We figured that would perfectly fit under Tom Clancy. Such a beautiful game for its age. A lot of games that were very kind of heavy on just shoot, kill, be done. That's how you get through these situations. Um, Splinter Cell made you slow down. It made you think. It made you kind of try to understand the threats that were ahead of you, and it layered all of those features together. Um, and it rewarded players for thinking differently, for, for being a bit more kind of patient with you know, the, the way that they chose to, to solve those situations. The idea of being the one who can make the difference, who can go into those places that no one's supposed to be able to go to and do what no one's supposed to be able to do, that's an incredibly powerful fantasy, and it's a lot of fun to be that person. We used an actor that was a recognized person, that was new at the time. Anybody have a line back to third echelon? Here, Fisher. What the hell's going on? Nicolas just declared war on the U.S. What? Did you now it's something that a lot of people do, a lot of game publishers. It's kind of normal, but at the time it wasn't. And we really looked at it like, first it was a Clancy's brand, so we looked at it like something bigger than just a video game, marketed it that way, and created a persona. Sam's a great character. Um, he's smart, he's funny. He's fast, he does what he can do um, with a minimum of waste. He's uh, high speed, low drag, and he's just an incredibly fun character to play. While Sam is unequivocally the star of the Splinter Cell franchise, let's be honest, he'd get nowhere without his signature night vision goggles. Not only are they an essential tool in Sam's arsenal, they're the symbol of the entire franchise. Those three green dots and that iconic sound Yep, that sound is enough to know exactly what wild in it. The sound Dude, came in very just late, wild. And I think that whole new world. Realize how important and valuable it was until someone said, you know, we really got to have a much more iconic sound in here somewhere, and it had this kind of very military uh, um, feel to it. We were trying to create something that felt very realistic and modern, and you know, just because of the speed at which technology moves, it kind of became its own. Thing in, in, in time and it adhered to sort of the genuineness of it and, and kind of stuck. You've got to be making another one. 19 years ago, Splinter Cell put Ubisoft on the map and changed the landscape for stealth action games across the industry. Now, thanks to the upcoming remake, a brand new generation can experience the best Splinter Cell has to offer. For future updates on the Splinter Cell remake, follow this channel and visit us Oof. at ubisoft.com. Oof. Oof. So, so, so looking forward to playing the remix of those, especially considering I've played them uh, when I was a lot younger. And just remembering art, just, just watching it and remembering it, it was it's incredible. Because graphics back then were the way graphics are now. Um, they were It was just beautiful, like the rain, shadows, everything that was spoken about there. Even the glass of the fish tank, where there was water, was just... Just dripping out constantly. It was a whole new thing. And I mean, it was amazing. But yeah, I am so looking forward to that when it drops. No release date by the looks of it. Nothing like that. But anyway, 
So thank you for watching the video with me. It's been a great time. Uh, if you like the video, subscribe, what have you. I'll see you around. I'm always here. I stream on Twitch also. But yeah, thank you very much. And I will catch you all again next time.